now I'm somebody who's been using a router for over 40 years and just look what I did the other day. Ouch! How did I do that? Well, I was edge trimming this new rocking chair design I'm working on and somehow the profile cutter slipped inside the MDF template and gouged out the wood. So this video is to show you how I discreetly repaired the damage and how it happened in the first place. And you know, almost more serious than for an expert like me to slip with the router was the fact that I hadn't actually checked the cutter beforehand. Well, can you notice what is wrong? Yes, there's a bearing collar missing and I didn't notice it at the time. And when I compare this cutter with the top quality one I normally use, there is no brand name. The bearing itself is crudely manufactured. It has a sharp edge. And who knows, the collar might have been pressed on and simply came adrift. Normally, the collar has a tiny Allen screw to tighten it and allow it to be removed to interchange different diameter bearing guides. Well, the fault was with me in not maintaining my cutters. Now, I'm not against cheap power tools. In fact, for occasional use, they can be terrific value. But generally, I use only the best cutters and one brand in particular. Well, when I created this guitar build ebook, uh, which has videos integrated, I wanted to make the publication accessible to beginners who might have very few tools. So I promoted a whole load of really excellent low cost tools, including a few router bits. And I have to say they did the job superbly well, saving a lot of handwork. So I'm not totally against cheap router bits, but I just think you have to be a little careful. And I don't know how this one slipped into my collection. I really don't know where it's come from. Well, a whole chair side ruined by one momentary slip with the router. So I set up a bigger router and used my top quality uh, router bit, somewhat old looking but perfectly serviceable. And I completed trimming that particular part of the edge to highlight uh, where it was gouged out. I then decided to do a little wood surgery. You know, this is what makes wood such a wonderful material. I very carefully traced around the gouged out section making sure the implant I was going to use uh, had matching grain. A little delicate cutting on that equally wonderful tool called a bandsaw, making sure I worked right up to the line that left the line on. Incidentally, I used Brazilian pine plywood for my rocking chair. Oh, you can't use plywood for quality furniture, I've been hearing for the past 40 years. Come on, get a life. Plywood is not an inferior material. It ain't cheap either. I think I'm going to have to live until I'm about 200 years old by the time many of my ideas are accepted and become mainstream. Take for example using a ballpoint pen to mark out the wood. Who is this guy? Lock him up for suggesting such irreverence to tradition. Much better to use a soft lead pencil that breaks and blunts as it draws. So. Having checked the insert fits, I then apply a bit of PVA type glue, my favourite, and put enough glue on both surfaces. And then push the implant into position and use that other wonderful invention, masking tape, to act as a clamp. I've lifted the MDF template up so I can form the tape around the top surface. I leave it to dry for uh, two hours to be safe. And finally I can retrim the edge with the router to bring the implant flush and then finish off by sanding. I don't think anyone would notice this repair unless they really look for it and unless of course they are woodworkers. Well thanks for watching and please subscribe.